Um, this is a mastermind session and it focuses on how to promote your business or your product or your um, your brand or yourself through the media and I'm talking about traditional media for free and what I mean by for free is you've got a couple of options you can um, you can either pay for uh, a commercial uh, which is fine or indeed you can go through a um, public relations firm and that is fine or you can do it yourself now um, Mark Aston is my name I'm the creator of six steps to free media publicity which is one of the courses um, that I um, that I put together and that is available on mastermind um, this is not a promotion about that course but what I wanted to do was I wanted to go through the course and just go through the modules with you and give you an overview as to not just the types of things that you would learn in the course, but I also want to give you some tips and techniques and strategies that you can take away from this. I think that's um, that's very, very important. So if you've got a, a business at all or uh, an interest or you're an author, for example, and you would like to get publicity, under normal circumstances, you may do a, a commercial, a paid commercial, or it may be, by the way, I'm outside, so you might hear my dog and some and some uh, birds as well. Um, or it may be that you want to do that publicity yourself. In other words, you want to act as though you are the uh, public relations uh, firm or do the same things as a public relations firm would do for you. And so there are, in the very first instance, there are a lot of things that you need to understand. And I just wanted to go through a couple of them so that you've got a feel for the knowledge that you need to acquire, which you will do now, basically, um, so that you can do this. Now, the reason that I have authority in talking to you about this is because I've been involved in the Australian media for 40 years, uh, working in newsrooms. So I have seen thousands and thousands and thousands of media releases or press releases, communiques, whatever you'd like to uh, call them, come into our newsrooms and they are of course sent in by individuals or um, uh, or um, public relations firms on behalf of their clients hoping that we will do a story on them and I have seen some really good ones which we've done stories on I've seen some okay ones which we have still done stories on but I've also done some that have been very poor and uh, I'm not uh, casting uh, aspersions on anyone. It's just that a lot of people who do their own publicity or, or, or perhaps send a, a media release out, for example, to the media, hoping to get publicity for their business or their products or their services or themselves, don't understand the basics. And that's what I'd like to do uh, today. So I have six modules within this course. And the first module I spent a lot of time on talking about how the media works, what the media wants, and how you can give the media what it wants. In other words, how you can utilize the media to your own advantage. You need to understand what makes news. You need to understand what what excites the media. You need to understand um, what the media is looking for in a story. Now, obviously, I've learned that over a period of 40 years, but I'm about to, in probably two or three minutes, explain to you in a nutshell and really um, condense it down I'm about to explain to you what they are looking for so fundamentally that's what that first module is all about and it's a really important base for you uh, when doing the course or indeed when you are doing uh, your own publicity or hoping to do your own publicity so journalists live they live for a story they are looking for stories all the time the moment they get up in the morning, they'd be thinking, oh, what can I do today? What story can I do today? And then when they walk into the newsroom, they walk over to uh, the boss and the boss, first thing the boss says is, have you got a story today? We need to fill our news bulletin. We need to fill our newspaper. We need to fill our radio, <clears throat> our radio show if, uh, if, if that particular person is working at a radio station. And so the media is out there looking for stories and you can promote and you can get yourself on television, radio, print, and on podcasts if you promote the right stories. So the journalists are there waiting for you. You just need to understand 
what to send them, what to send them, and and to uh, and how to to write and promote that story and articulate that story to those people, to those journalists. So fundamentally, the media is looking for a story that is of interest to their audience. And let's let's say, let's be specific, and let's say, and I'm in Adelaide, Australia, let's say it's Channel 7 Adelaide. Now, they have about 100,000 people watching uh, their news service. They have a whole range of news services throughout the day, but they have about 100,000 people watching their 6 o'clock news service. And that's, if you can get on that news service, that's great free publicity for you. And I'll give you an example in a minute. What they're looking for is they're looking for a story that, that is of interest to their audience. Now, there's a whole criteria of, of things that they're looking for within what makes a, a, a news story, and I'll give you a couple of them. If it's something that's happening now, now you might think, well, that's obvious. But the point I'm making is if your story happened two weeks ago, then they're probably not going to be interested. So it needs to be happening now, or it needs to be happening in the future, soon in the future. Um, they're interested in stories that are very local. So if you're based in Adelaide and you have a product or a service or you have a thought that uh, is, is applicable to the people in Adelaide, then that's something that they are interested in. The media is also interested in things like topics that affect people's hip pocket. In other words, financial stories. Let's say, for example, a local, let's say, Let's say, for example, you, you come up with a, a product that can save people money somehow. I, I'm just thinking about this off the top of my head. And let's say it might, it, it might be an app, and it might be an app where you can, uh, you can go into that app and find the cheapest, um, uh, you know, the cheapest products, it might be food products, uh, it, whatever it might be. And, and let, let's say, for example, that will help consumers know where to go to buy that product that's a good story for the media because it affects their viewers because everyone is buying and let's say their food products everyone's buying food products and if this app can help people get cheaper food then the media understand that a lot of people will be interested in that so they'll be interested in that story um, they're also interested in in controversy so if you've got a story or a view that is opposing to the general population or the general view is this and you have a different view, the media would be interested in your view on that or they'd be interested in interviewing you about your view. Um, the media are particularly interested in human nature, uh, human interest stories, I should say. Human interest. Oh, let me give you an example. Let's say you've had a restaurant for 49 years and you're about to celebrate 50 years and the owner of that restaurant's a 90 year old man and you let the media know that you're having a, a celebration lunch at the at the restaurant for that gentleman and the restaurant's well known the media may be interested in doing a story on that it's human interest um, let's say for example you run a uh, you have a mental health and mental health at the moment is very big but let's say for example you run a a program that helps people with their mental health and let's say that you have come up with a different program and it helps a specific group of people let's say it helps indigenous people or it helps young kids up to the age of five or ten say um, let's say it helps men specifically or women that's a good story from the media's point of view because it's human interest and mental health is a big thing obviously COVID is a big thing as well um, the media are particularly interested in stories that have a personality or someone who is high profile involved. So a story that happened in Adelaide a while back was when the Rolling Stones were here, they did a concert at the Adelaide Oval. But before they did the concert, they went up to a winery in the uh, in the hills. And the owner of the winery took a photo with Mick Jagger and his family and stuff, sent that to the media. The media did a story. Now, the media didn't interview Mick Jagger. He, he didn't want that. But the point I'm making is that winery uh, got international coverage because the Rolling Stones had come to them and sat down, had a meal and had some of their wine and purchased some of their wine. So the media particularly like those sorts of those sorts of stories as well. And there's a whole range of other things that I go more deeply into in um, Six Steps to Free Media Publicity. So if you have a general view, a, a general background, a general a general knowledge about what the media requires, 
then you're on your way to getting free media publicity. The second module is all about identifying story ideas, and I'll give you a, a, some um, specifics here. The second module is, is all about identifying story ideas within your business that the media would be interested. Now, let me give you an example. So this is a, a book that's been published by Kate Howe, who is a, a very well-known psychologist in Adelaide, and it's called The Changing Man, a mental health guide. Now, Kate came to me and said she didn't want to do her own publicity, and, she, and I do a little bit of PR for people, not much, because it's, it's just me. But Kate came to me and said, I'd like to promote this book. I've, I've just written it. I'd like to promote it. And so I sat down with Kate and I said, okay, tell me about it. She said, well, it's all about mental health. I said, okay, that's, that's a good start. The media may be interested in that. Is there something different? Is there something different about the book? You know, is there something within the book that we could promote as part of the promotion for the book? And she said, well, and this is typical, I guess, of people, and it's not, I'm not being disrespectful to Kate, but it's typical of people who don't understand the media and their wants and needs and how to promote something. She said, oh, well, not really. She said, it's it, it, it's for boys. And I said, okay, well, that's good. That's not too bad. I said, that's a reasonable angle. I said, is there anything else? She said, well, not really. She said, I can't think of anything else. And I thought to myself, well, I can probably help her promote that. That's not a bad angle. Mind you, a lot of people write books about mental health and they write books about mental health uh, that are aimed at boys. So it, it's okay, it's not too bad. And then she said, look, I, I'll ask my co-editor, uh, my co-writer and see if, if he's got any idea. And I said, okay, who's that? She said, it was my son. I said, hang on, hang on. I said, so you've written this book with your son? And she said, yes, I have. And I said, that's a great angle. So what we did was we wrote a media release and uh, and I'll go into the media release aspect in a second. We wrote wrote a media release basically promoting the book and the fact that her and her son had written a book on mental health. Within an hour, the local newspaper had rung me and said, we'd love to do a story on that. And Kate also got two radio interviews because we workshopped it and we came up with something that we knew that the media would be interested in. Now, one of the things I didn't mention earlier about what the media looks for in a story is they look for things that are unique or a bit different and this is different it's a book a lot of people have written books it's about mental health a lot of people have written books on mental health it's about young boys a lot of people have written books on bo young boys and mental health but not many people have written a book with their son and then published it and so the media thought and i know this is how they would think they'd go well, a lot of people have written books on mental health but this is interesting because Kate's actually written it with her son. That's a good angle. So we got three lots of publicity for that, which I was really thrilled for, for Kate. Another good example might be, um, I'll just turn my um, emails off. Another good example uh, is if, if, um, if you're a vet, if you're a veterinarian, and please understand that all of these examples, you can take something away from your business. So I know I'm being specific with an author and a veterinarian, and I'll give you an example with, say, a financial advisor in a second. But please understand it's the thinking that's important. It's the way you think about the possibility of you sitting on a story within your business that the media might be interested in. So this technique is called piggybacking off the back of a, a news story. And what that means is that when there's a news story, when there's a story within the news, television, radio, print, in the paper, whatever it might be, that happens today, and there's an affiliation between that story and what you do, you can piggyback off the back of that. Let me give you, let me give you the example about the vet. So probably about four or five weeks ago, there was a story in the paper about a nasty dog virus going, going around in, in Adelaide. Now, a lot of people have dogs, so that ticks one of the boxes in terms of the media. They think, well, this, is, this could be a good story because you know, it's unfortunate, but it's a good story because a lot of our viewers have dogs or a lot of our viewers know people who have dogs. So it ticked one of those boxes for a start. It was happening now, so that's another box that it ticked. It was a little bit different, ticked that box as well. So if you're a veterinarian and you wanted to promote or get promotion for your veterinarian clinic, what I would be advising you to do, and we'll get to the media release, the writing of the media release in a second, but what I would be suggesting you do 
is that you write a media release and say how concerned you are about the virus. And then, because you are an expert, you are a veterinarian, I would then put a list of three things in that media release saying these are the three things that you need to look for with your dog to ensure that they don't have the virus. Runny nose, tiredness, gone off their food, whatever it might be. Or you might put a list in saying these are the three things that you need to do to ensure your dog doesn't get the virus. Don't take them for a walk. I don't know, clean their bowls um, and make sure that they sleep inside, whatever it might be. I'm not a veterinarian. So the point I'm making is you're sending a media release out to the media as a veterinarian about a story that's happening now about a dog virus. The media will probably want to do that story anyway. So the story may have been in the advertiser, which is our local newspaper, but the TV station or TV stations in Adelaide might want to follow up on it or radio stations might want to follow up on it. So when they see the media release, they go, oh, yeah, I saw this story in the advertiser. This is interesting. This veterinarian is giving us some good advice on what to do to try and avoid your dog getting a virus. Let's give him or her a ring and talk to him on our news service or on our radio station. That's how you can piggyback off the back of a story that has just happened now. I'll give you another very quick example. If you're a, a financial advisor anywhere in the world, it doesn't matter where you are, and 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 your local government or it would be your 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 national government is about to make some changes to superannuation laws then that affects a lot of people because a lot of people have got superannuation. So if you are a financial advisor, and presumably you are an expert, I'd be sending a media release out to all the media outlets saying, this is what's going on, and these are the things that people need to do straight away to make sure that they are not affected by this in a negative way. Now, the, now let me just explain this. When that story breaks about superannuation laws being changed, the media will be thinking, we need to do a story on this anyway. So they'll be looking at speaking to the federal minister who made the announcement. They might be spe they might be thinking about doing a story with a family who have got superannuation and how they think it'll affect them. But if they're in their newsroom and they get a, a, a media release from you, Mark Aston Finances, with all the details that they need and, that, and the view of that particular financial advisor, they're going to think, why don't we speak to him or her? He can be a good part of the story. So what that financial advisor has done is they have been proactive. They've sent a media release to the media. The media probably wanted to speak to a financial advisor anyway, and you've made the job easier for them. When the journalist is looking at doing this story, they'd be getting, they'd be looking at getting an interview, as I said, with the federal minister and a family. They're I'm sure they're going to be looking for someone to speak to in the financial area who is an expert. And what you've done is you've saved them making a million phone calls to just random financial advisors. You've been proactive. So that's the opportunity that you have when there is a story that is already in the media. And as I say, that's called piggybacking on the back of, uh, of a news story. But as I explained earlier, there are a whole range of other things that the media are looking for that you can take advantage of. So identifying story ideas within your business is key. Understanding how the media works is important. No question about that. That's the first process. That's the first plank, if you like. With that knowledge, the next step is to, is to identify story ideas within your business that the media will be interested in, which is module two. Module three is all about, and you'd be asking, well, you mentioned media release. I mean, I wouldn't even know what a media release is. I mean, how do I contact the media? How do I do that? So what you do is you do what a public relations firm does for you, except you do it internally within your business. You write a media release. Now, I can't be specific on this visually, but I can talk to you about it generally. I can talk to, talk to you about it generally, and I'd like to do a video where I actually show you visually what a, a media release looks like. And hopefully you've got some idea. So in a very general sense, a media release on an A4 sheet of paper, and of course generally it's emailed these days, so they don't generally print them out, has a number of things up the top. It has your logo, it has the word media release or press release or communique, it has the date, and it has your contact details. Mark Aston Veterinarian, 260 Portrush Road, Glen Osmond, 5064, email address, phone number, website. That's up the top, and that's easy. 
you, that, 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 that's easy. Because when you send the media release out to the media, and I'll get to that in a minute, obviously they need to know who it's from. The next step is to write a headline, and that is the next level down. Now, the headline is generally two paragraphs in 20-point font highlighted in capitals. Now, the headline is the most important thing on a media release, and the reason is because it's the first thing generally that the reporter or the person within the media organisation will see when they get the media release. So let's go back to the veterinarian. Let's say the veterinarian thinks, well, that's a dangerous dog virus. I need to send a media release out to the media because I want free publicity. I want to get an, an interview. Uh, I want to explain to people how dangerous this is. And I want to give them those three tips that I mentioned, the things that you need to look out for to make sure your dog doesn't have uh, the virus. Now, again, I'm just thinking off the top of my head here, and I, I, I'm, I'll be as accurate as I can. But if I was advising that veterinarian to write a really a really good headline for that media release, I'd, I'd be suggesting something like, get straight to the point. The three key things dog owners need to do to protect the health of their pets or puppies. That's one line. And then the second line can be something like, um, um, uh, you know, major dog virus outbreak in Adelaide. This is how you combat it. So when the media, whoever it is that reads that media release, looks at that, they go, wow, I know about that dog virus. This is a good story. They've read that headline straight away and it's captured their imagination. The light's gone off in their head. Now, that veterinarian could have written something like, dangerous dog virus in Adelaide, be careful, or they wouldn't like that, but dangerous dog virus in Adelaide, um, uh, you need to protect your pets. It's okay, but it's not standing out, if you understand what I'm saying. It's not standing out. To give you the example of the, um, uh, of the financial advisor, they would say something like, um, um, three key things you need to do following the government's announcement to change superannuation laws. That might be one sentence, and then the second sentence can be, and you're workshopping, this second sentence can be, and you need to do them immediately. So as soon as the media sees that, they go, this is a good story, it affects a lot of people, these changes are about to come in, um, there'll be a lot of people out there a little bit fearful, a little bit worried, let's interview that financial advisor. So, and I, I hope I haven't digressed too much because we're talking about the media release here. So up the top, you've got your contact details, you've got your logo, you've got the word media release, you've got the date, then you've got your headline. Now, if the person in the media organisation reads the headline and likes it, they will then read what I call the explainer paragraph or paragraphs, which fundamentally explains what the headline's all about. So in the case of the veterinarian, it might be, and again, I'm just thinking, I'm just ad-libbing this, but again, it might be something like um, uh, there's been a major outbreak of a particular dog virus in Adelaide, which could spread very quickly, not just to South Australia, but to all of Australia. You as a dog owner need to make sure you protect your pet, and there are a number of things that you can do to ensure this. Do you get my drift? Or, for example, with the financial advisor, it might be something like, the, local, uh, the, 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 uh, the federal government has decided uh, to change superannuation laws. Remember, this is under the headline. The federal government has decided to change superannuation laws, and there are a number of things you need to know to make sure that your nest egg is not in danger. Do you see what I'm saying? So what happens is the person within the media organisation will read that and they'll go, okay, great headline, like that, yep. This guy or this woman knows what they're talking about. They've just explained what's going on here in, in a bit more detail. Let's do a story on it. Now, that's generally at the level, that's generally about within the media release where that particular person in that media organisation would go to to immediately then hand it to a journalist to do a story. But there are other things you can put in. For example, you can put in quotes. So you could put in some quotes. The veterinarian might put in a quote. Uh, so he'd just write, you know, as if he's in the third person. This is a dangerous virus and you must be uh, extremely careful. Uh, it can spread quickly uh, and, 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 can, and can result in death. 
So you'd put that quote in. You might, and then obviously with the veterinarian and the financial advisor, you would put that list. Those three things that you need to do to protect your dog, or in the case of the financial advisor, those three things that you need to do immediately if the superannuation or when the superannuation changes come in. Now again, I'm just letting you know that I'm talking about a veterinarian here and a financial advisor, but this applies to any business. And to show you how it applies to any business, I'll give you another example. Just, I, I know I'm digressing from the, the, the media release, but I really wanna make this clear. Let's say you're a plumber, and let's say the last three days it's been, it, there's been a deluge of water, and you're aware that a lot of people's places are flooding. You could put out a media release saying, this rain is not stopping, this would be the headline, this rain is not stopping, and your place is about to get flooded. Here are three things you can do immediately, and I'm using a list here, you don't have to use a list all the time. Here are three things you can do immediately to save your property. Now again, the media will be interested in the story about the flooding or the rain because they, they're obsessed with weather, and this is a different angle. And when a journalist reads that and goes, this is interesting, he's a plumber, uh, he, he's given people some really good advice on how, how you know, they can, they can do something really quickly to stop their house flooding. And the journalist would be thinking, well, there'd be a lot of houses flooding out there. A lot of people would be interested in this. This is a good story. So it ticks that box where it's a bit unusual, ticks the box where it's happening now, ticks the box that it is affecting a lot of people. In fact, it affects probably everyone because the rain is coming down and a lot of people would, you know, a lot of people would be would be having flooding. So the point I'm making is the, the tips and techniques I'm offering you now are... Uh, may sound specific to plumbers, um, uh, financial advisors, and vets, but the techniques apply to all of you, no matter what business you're in. Even if you, even if you've got a knitting business, or you you're in real estate, or uh, you're a doctor, or I don't know, a knee surgeon. Um, it doesn't matter. You could be in a really specific niche. Mental health is big. Make no mistake about it. Anything to do with COVID, they're all big. They're huge. The media love those sorts of, love those topics at the moment. They're big. Mental health, COVID, they're huge on that. Um, uh, safety, health, um, cars being stolen. And you might think, well, what do you mean cars being stolen? Well, let's say there's been two or three cars stolen in the city recently and the media have been doing a story on it and you own a, uh, a, you know, a car accessories store and you sell car locks. Well, why not send a media release out and say something like, when you're buying car locks, make sure that uh, that you pick the right one. Here are the do's and don'ts when picking a car lock. Now, the media will look at that and they'll go, well, there's been a lot of car, car thefts lately. This could be a good story. Everyone's got a car. Some, some might be interested in buying a car lock. So that's how, that's the point I'm making is all of these techniques apply are applicable to any business any business and obviously i go into a lot more detail in in the course so back to the media release so i'll just go over it once more so you understand generally top left hand corner your contact details and the date logo in the middle and i can, I can chat about the logo in a lot of detail you need to make sure that it's a a PNG and it's and it's uh, uh, you know it's um, it's high quality and all that sort of stuff, um, and then perhaps on the right hand side, but you can swap this around. The word media release in twenty point font, bright uh, and uh, bolded, and um, and capitalised. Under that the headline. Under that the explainer uh, paragraph. Under that quotes. Under that either quotes or those three tips, and then under that. A short bio of your business so that people know who you are and what you're doing and then basically if that's it then under that your contact details again and when you write your contact details at the bottom you'd say something like if you're interested in speaking to Mark Ace and the veterinarian please contact this number whatever it might be so then you need to send that media release out to the media now again you're probably thinking well okay well I've got my media release where the hell where the hell do I send it Mark now it, it, I go into a lot more detail in the course and this is a little bit of work for you, but this is what PR agencies do for you. This is why a lot of people go through PR agencies. What you need to do, and let's take Channel 10, for example, or Channel 7 in Adelaide, I mentioned them earlier. You need to ring them 
and this is TV, you need to ring them and you need to ask for the email address of the chief of staff. When you get that email address, you have one email address in your email database, and that is how you start building. You then go to Channel 7, you then go to Fox, you then go to NBC or CBS or whatever it might be. That's TV. You might think, well, I'm interested in this being a, a newspaper story. Well, then check out who the newspapers are in your local area or nationally, ring them and ask for their <coughs> chief. That's my puppy dog. Ask for the chief editor's email address. It's a slightly different word. You ask for the chief editor's email address. It might be different in different countries. But fundamentally, what you're doing is you're saying, I have a media release I'd like to send. What's the best email? That's fundamentally what you're doing. Now, radio is a bit different because radio stations have a news service and they also have uh, shows, specific shows all the way through the day. So with a radio station, you would ask for the news director's email address, but you might also ask for some of the producers of those shows' email addresses. And I hope that's clear, but again, I go into detail about that. Once you've got those email addresses and you have your media release and you've identified a story idea within your business, bingo, you send it out and you wait. There's a bit more of a process to, to that, not physically, but there's a process. Um, but fundamentally, that's how that works. So that is module three. Correct. Module three, yeah. Module four is all about preparing for your interview. Now, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here, but what I mean by that is you need to prepare for your interview. You need to be ready for it. You need to think about what messages you want to get across, what messages you want to articulate. You need to make sure that when the media turn up and they've decided to do an interview at your veterinarian clinic that it's clean and that you've got an area where you can do the interview. You need to put up your logo. You need to put up a, a screen with your logo on it. That would be great if you can do that. They may do the interview outside uh, with the, the front of your office. But most importantly, you need to think very carefully about what you'd like to say within the interview. Now, you may be an expert and think, well, I don't really need to do that. But please understand that you can get caught out. And again, I go into far more detail about that in the course. The fifth module is all about developing relationships with, with the media, which is important because two or three months down the track, if you've had two or three stories on the news, on the local news, and you've got to know a reporter, how good's that? That is brilliant. You might have their phone number. You've got their email, their personal email. You can send them an email and say, look, I'm thinking about doing a story on this. What do you think? What's a better angle? This is my angle. Do you think there's a better angle? Once you develop a relationship with someone, a reporter, then you've got the advantage of being able to discuss with them the best way of you promoting that story in terms of what you write in your media release or indeed whether it's a good enough story or not. And that's priceless. That is priceless. And down the track, what we will find will happen is that instead of you sending a media release to a reporter, they'll ring you and say, hey, I've got no story today. Um, is there anything happening in the veterinarian area? Because they might be a, an animal uh, reporter. Or the financial reporter might ring the financial guy or woman and say, anything happening in finance at the moment? Is there any changes to superannuation? Is there something going on with taxes? Or I need a story. Or they might just have developed this relationship with, um, uh, you know, with, with, with a, uh, I don't know, a, a local doctor or something. So they bring them. So that's the advantage when you start to develop relationships with reporters. They come to you for stories. You don't have to go to them all the time. And the last um, module is, I call it the piece de resistance, because the whole purpose of this course is to get you publicity, to promote you, to promote your business, your product, your service, your thoughts as a thought leader, as an expert, as an authority. And if you're on Channel 7, Channel 9, CBS, NBC, Fox, whatever it might be in the paper, on radio, that's great. That's a great start because when people listen to you or see you or read about you, provided you're prepared, they will see you as an expert. So I guess the bottom line is they'll want to do business with you and that's the whole point of this. But there's another way you can do that, and that is by getting up on stage at a forum, at a conference, uh, as a corporate speaker. And that way there, I think, is just wonderful. I've, I've been doing that for years and years and years um, as a host, really, mainly, not as a corporate speaker, uh, although I do do corporate speaking 
on addiction and uh, mental health, which is a story for another day. And you're probably thinking, what's that about? Anyway, um, but once you start to build that profile within traditional media, television, radio, print, podcasts, and I haven't really touched on that, but we do in the course. Or do we? Yeah, I, I do mention that in the course, I think. Anyway, um, once you start to build a bit of a profile and you're a veterinarian and there's a vet, a vet uh, forum in, in Adelaide in 12 months' time, become a speaker there. And there are ways and means of doing that, and we go through that. But become one of the keynote speakers. I mean, how good's that? A, you probably get paid for it. B, it's great experience. And C, it's great coverage. And the media may even turn up and do a story on the fact that you're up on stage talking to all of these vets from around the country, around the world, about your ideas, your thoughts, your techniques, your uh, the, 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 some of the things that you do with your pets. I don't know, and I'm just using veterinarian as an example. It might be that you're the financial guru and you're at a, a conference or a forum talking about a controversial new way to save money or whatever it might be. So not only do you pr promote that to those people, those people tell others, the media may cover cover that story, you get free publicity. You get free publicity. I'll finish with this. I didn't want this to be too long. I'll finish with this. If you have a business, yes, of course, you can go to a public relations firm. Uh, that that is that's a given of course you can and you'll pay a monthly fee possibly and of course you'll pay a fee each time they um, they get you some publicity that's if you can't do it internally that's fine you can also as I said right at the start you can also um, pay for publicity and that's fine as well but you can also do it within your own organization and the advantage is it it, it doesn't cost you anything it just costs you a little time and a little knowledge gathering that's all it costs you and if you send a media release out and you get no coverage okay disappointed what did it cost you one of your assistants or you taking an hour out of your day to write the media release and send it to them that's it and i'd like to do a, a, a complete session on 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 confidence and 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 being um, and overcoming disappointment because there will be times where you'll send a media release out and it won't work. You won't get coverage. That will happen. But in a general sense, what I'm saying is don't be disappointed. Just learn from it and do it again um, and do it again and do it again and do it again. The media are always looking for stories. And to finish, and, and, and I've been of this view now for a long time, from a credibility point of view, Go back to the vet. From a credibility point of view, the vet pays for a, a commercial on TV. Obviously, there are going to be good things said about that vet and that veterinarian clinic. But if that veterinarian is on Channel 7 standing there saying, we're very concerned about this um, virus, very, very concerned, and I implore people to do three things straight away. As soon as they've seen this, do three things to make sure that your dog is safe. They do this, this, and this. When you are seen on a TV news service like that or heard on radio or in print or on a podcast, your credibility, provided you prepare, skyrockets. And provided you do it with empathy and, and, and feeling and, and, as I say, credibility and authority, people at home will be going, wow, he or she knows what she's talking about. That Let's go out and check. We'd better check our beautiful dog. And then they'll go, you know what? We sort of don't live in the area, but he, he looks really good. Why don't we go to his veterinarian clinic? That's the exciting. That's the exciting thing. And you get one customer, and you know that's the start of it all. Um, there are veterinarians in Adelaide. There are financial advisors. There are real estate agents who are constantly on radio, television, in print, who the media default to because it's easy. Real estate story comes up, they default to this person. Financial story comes up, they default to this person. The only reason they're defaulting to them is that no one else is letting them know that they're also available as an expert to talk about this particular topic. And you can be one of those people. So that was an overview of the course. But again, I wanted to give you value, and I hope I did. Um, it's uh, six steps to, I had to think then, it's six steps to free media publicity. My name is Mark Aston. Um, I wrote it, uh, I produced it, and I presented it, and I'm very proud of it. Um, and I'm going to uh, do a lot more of these masterminds and be a bit more specific and give some really good examples. And I'll also do some 
uh, with some slides. I don't generally like using slides. I think they're a bit boring sometimes. But with the media release, I think that's important that I do that. And I'll also uh, get some stories that have been in the news, whether it be print, radio, television, or even a podcast, and I'll dissect it for you and, and, and show you how that particular person may have got that publicity by the media release uh, that they sent out and we'll dissect it so you'll have a bit more of an idea. Um, if there's any businesses out there, any businesses at all um, that you're involved in that you would like me to do something specific on, uh, just send me an email at mark, mark, M-A-R-K, at mediainsider.com.au, mark at mediainsider.com.au, and I'll try and do as many of these as I possibly can. My puppy dog was really good. He didn't uh, bark. The other one just came outside, so there's every chance that there's going to be a massive fight in a second. But one thing's for sure, I did check both of them, and neither one of them have got that virus, which I'm very pleased about. I hope you enjoyed that, and uh, we'll talk soon. Thank you.